Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Mary and today I will be doing a continuation of assessments for the pediatrics practice area. And if it's your first time here, I just want to mention that the purpose of this video is to go over some common tips and tricks that I use while studying for the MBCOT exam to remember all the assessments that I had to memorize. And so if you haven't watched the developmental assessment and the uh, visual motor and visual processual assessment that I covered last week be sure to go back and review that one first because I do go over some study tips and strategies that I thought were effective in helping me retain the information now I'm just gonna go over the four assessments four sensory assessments today and whatever you don't um, remember and retain from watching this video rest assured I will upload a document on my Facebook group so you can always go back and review that later but hopefully this will be the one time you'll have to listen to it and you'll just know it from then on. That's the goal. Okay, the first one we're going to start with is the sensory profile. And remember that there are two assessments for a sensory profile. There's one for infant and toddlers from birth to 36 months. And there is one for adolescents and adults, which is from 11 years to 65 years. So let's start with the sensory profile for infants and toddlers. As the name suggests, uh, what, what's in the name? Sensory profile. So obviously we're looking at the sensory system and profile by definition means a description, a short description of a someone's life or a character. So this assessment is providing a profile of how infants and toddlers are responding to various sensory experiences in their daily life. Now, can infants and toddlers uh, adequately express themselves in discomfort and how they're uh, perceiving and experiencing sensory experiences? No. So how will this assessment be administered? It will be administered through a caregiver questionnaire. This is a judgment based which means that it'll be based on the caregiver or the parents uh, observation of how the infant or their toddler is responding to various uh, sensory experiences in their life. Uh, this is a very brief uh, assessment. It takes only approximately 15 minutes to uh, fill out the questionnaire. And again, it is based on the caregiver's judgment and observation. Sensory profile for uh, adolescent and adult is very similar to infant and toddler. The only difference here that you would need to know is that instead of the caregiver administer or filling out the questionnaire, it would now be the self uh, observation, self-judgment of how they uh, experience and deal with sensory experiences in their daily life. And so if you haven't watched my videos on or a video on tactile defensiveness, I was talking about how difficult it is for me to wear anything with tacks because it really starts to bother me and that's the only thing I can focus on and actually start to affect my functional occupational performance. The day I recorded that video, I actually came home because I was unable to concentrate on anything, had to change out of that shirt and get in my PJs to calm my anxiety. So um, this is something that I've always dealt with in my life, but it wasn't until I filled out this questionnaire, the sensory profile questionnaire, that I learned that the way I experience different sensory experiences in my life is different from others who may not have this grossly exaggerated res response to a mere tag on their t-shirt. Okay, now we move on to sensory integration and practice. Praxis, I always say practice, sensory integration and praxis test. And this is for four and at four years to eight years and 11 months. And this is also written now as SIP, people refer to it as SIP, sensory integration and praxis. One of the ways that I remember this one is I think of SIP 
which is what this is, and I think of a sip of wine. <laughs> because if you want to administer the practice, the sensory integration practice test, you will need to take a sip of wine because you are in for a long ride. This assessment takes two hours to administer. And in order for the therapist to be able to administer and interpret the results, they will need extensive training and certificate on administration and interpretation of results. And um, on the flip side of that, what you will get is a very comprehensive uh, information on the sensory integration and processing of a child. There are 17 tests covering motor-free visual perception, as well as somatosensory practice and sensory motor. And so you might, uh, during the assessment, ask a child to copy a design or copy a certain motor movement or identify tactile stimulation, localize it tactile stimulation um, and again this provides you a very rich comprehensive overview of the child's uh, sensory processing. So finally we're going to talk about the sensory processing measure and this is for elementary school children. Now this one is unique and one of the distinguishing features of this assessment is that it is school-based and it takes place across different settings. So this is something to note and remember. It takes place, one form is uh, filled out in the home, another one in the classroom, and another one in a school environment, in any other school environment. And um, typically the one at home will be filled out the parent, one in the classroom by a teacher, and the school environment, it may vary. And another distinguishing feature of this particular assessment is that it uh, also includes social participation. So the focus areas for this assessment is social participation, praxis, as well as sensory processing. All right. So I think that's it for sensory processing tonight. Uh, it's really late, so I went through it fast. I have to get to sleep to start the day tomorrow. But these four um, sensory assessments are pretty straightforward and um, I don't feel like I needed to really cover a lot of tricks. But remember to uh, focus on distinguishing features when you're studying the assessments to be able to identify and choose the most appropriate assessment to administer when you're faced with an MBCOT exam question, okay? All right, that's it. Good night, everyone.